So who will be the Democrat that runs against Trump in 2020? Now, of course, all we can do is speculate, since most people haven't actually acknowledged they're going to run. And, of course, how could we forget, as for Michael Avenatti, who admitted he was exploring a run for the presidency, his run ended, well, prematurely, shall we say. Because, you know, he's a, he's a family man, after all. A family man that represents porn stars like Horny Stormy D and gets arrested for charges of beating up his girlfriend. But that's neither here, here nor there. What you need to know is if Trump keeps his promises, and he must keep his promises, he really doesn't have to worry about any of these clowns beating him in 2020. In fact, he should actually relish the opportunity to run against them, since they are all such a bunch of bumbling buffoons. So the only person who's definitely thrown his hat into the ring on the Democrat side is a dude named John Delaney. And this guy's like, I'm just, I'm working class. I'm just like you. I just don't believe in any of the things that normal working class people believe in. Democrats can't win by just attacking Trump. We really have to show the American people there's a better way. There's a better way. I mean, I don't know about you, but I love me a crusty, bald aristocrat who pretends to be one of the folks. He's just like you. And according to him, there's got to be a better way. That better way is universal health care, women's reproductive freedom, a.k.a. abortion on demand for any reason, and environmentalism. You know, just your, just your average regular dude and all the things that we regular people care about. That obviously was why he was the first to throw his hat in the ring to stop Trump, because regular people want to stop Trump. But no one actually cares about this loser, and I doubt many of you have even ever heard of the guy. No, the favorite, oh, the favorite person on the left is Beto. And you've got to say it with a soft T like you live in Ibiza because he's a soft dude. Now, even though the most notable thing that Beto has ever done is waste millions of dollars in losing Senate race, losing his Senate race to Ted Cruz, Beto is the new Democrat golden boy. Now, his real name is Robert. So they can preach all they want about diversity, but when it comes down to it, the Democrats just love themselves a good old white dude with a Hispanic-sounding name. Now, Beto is surging ahead of Biden and Bernie, who we'll get to in a second, according to the Move On 2020 straw poll. Now, we don't actually know, we know nothing about Beto's positions, aside from the fact that he loves renewable energy and abortion like your average Democrat. But quite honestly, isn't it weird that we had never heard of him until a couple of months ago, despite his being in Congress since 2013? We just know that he skateboards. Beto O'Rourke is on a skateboard in a Whataburger parking lot. I don't know if it gets more Beto. And he likes to cuss because he's cool. I'm so f***ing proud of you guys. Yeah, he's proud of them because they lost an election. Great. Typical Democrat. Everyone's a winner. He's the Obama candidate, guys. Lots of slick packaging, not a lot of substance. And he'd get his ass creamed in a debate because he doesn't actually believe in anything other than himself. And as his name, Bozo O'Rourke, suggests, he's a big, giant clown. Oh, and by the way, if you want to tell me conservatives are lame fuddy-duddies, take a look at his supporters. <laughs> They, those people make me ashamed of my country. Okay, next on the list, we've got, oh, creepy Joe Biden. Love Joe Biden. We're told Biden has a really good shot, even though he's a 76-year-old man who is completely prone to gaffes. When the stock market crashed, Franklin Roosevelt got on television. Yeah, remember when the stock market crashed in 1929 and Franklin Roosevelt, who was not president, got on television, even though there were no TVs in 1929? All right, pal. There's also the time that he told a paraplegic Missouri senator to stand. Chuck Graham, state senator's here. Chuck, stand up, Chuck. Let him see you. Oh, God love you. What am I talking about? Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about, Joe, because the poor guy can't stand. Oh, and let's not forget about Joe Biden's slave mongering to black folks. They're going to put you all back in chains. So... If that's the picture of the reasonable, responsible, moderate Democrat, then we've got Bernie Sanders, the crazy, insane socialist. By the way, are you starting to see a trend with these guys? They're all old white dudes. The Democrat Party is run by old white men. But Bernie Sanders, the oldest and the whitest of them, is here to stick it to the millionaires and billionaires. 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 
Yeah, standing up to the billionaires. You know, it must take a lot of courage for a mere, mere millionaire like him who just owns three homes, just three, that's all, including a beachfront home and a lakefront home to stand up to the billionaires. His plan is to take your money and redistribute it to lazy heroin addicts. Isn't that a great plan? Then of course, we have Kamala Harris. Now, Kamala, she wants to abolish ICE because she thinks they're, they're KKK. The, the Klan was a, what we would call today a domestic terrorist group. Why? Why, why would we call them domestic terrorist group? Because they tried to use fear and force to change political environment. And what was the motivation for the use of fear and force? It was based on race and ethnicity. Right. Are you aware of the perception of um, many about how the, the, the power and the discretion that ICE is being used to enforce the laws? And do you see any parallels? I do not see any parallels between sworn I'm talking about perception. officers and agents. I'm talking about perception. I, I do not see a parallel between what is constitutionally mandated as, in, as it relates to enforcing the law. Are you aware that there's a rights. perception? I see no Are you aware that there's a that perception? That puts ICE in the same category as the KKK. What is she even talking about? There is no perception whatsoever like that among the American people. The, the country would be in such dire straits if this woman had the keys to the Oval Office. And if this were the country's first female president, I promise you we would be the laughing stock of the world. So who's next on our list? Now we've got this histrionic hack known as Cory Spartacus Booker. He's so brave. When the commander in chief speaks or refuses to speak, those words just don't dissipate like mist in the air. They fester. They become poison. They give license to bigotry and hate in our country. I, I mean, if this were an audition for a movie I, and I were the director, I'd be like, who brought in this joke from the amateur dramatic society? I mean, this guy is one bad monologue away from landing a starring role in a Hallmark Channel movie. When my dad got sick. I never got to say goodbye. <laughs> And what he did to Kavanaugh alone, which was unacceptable, should be enough to disqualify him from ever being in the White House. He lied about breaking the rules only to seem like a badass. He was like, even if it means losing my seat, I'm gonna reveal this confidential documents from Kavanaugh's time as Bush's staff secretary. And then the Bush team came out and they were like, no dude, we actually gave you permission to release those documents. So he's a liar. And let's not forget, he has been accused of sexually harassing another dude. So I mean, if we're gonna play the game where all accusations are true, regardless of the evidence, then he needs to answer to this. Then on our list, we've got Pocahontas. Can you paint with all the colors of the wind? Now I really hate to break it to her, but the chances of her becoming the first American Indian president are far less than one 1,024th, which is exactly how much of a Native American she really is. Her years of lying to the public about her heritage are over, but I don't really care what color her skin is, which is lily white, by the way. Like Bernie, she is a radical socialist who hates America, hates the free market. She attacks the rich, despite being filthy rich herself. She's actually probably even richer than Three Homes Bernie. And of course, she wants limitless abortion, even for babies who are capable of feeling pain, which is something that even moderate Democrats are like, okay, maybe we shouldn't let that happen. So if she was gonna be our first American Indian president, I sure am glad we're not gonna have an American Indian president. And then we've got Michael Bloomberg, AKA Mayor McFascist of New York City. We've just forgotten how bad he was because the train wreck that is de Blasio has made the city into an uninhabitable hellhole. But if Bloomberg became president, if he got his way, sugary drinks might be made illegal in America. Yes, can't wait for that. If you want to drink with too much sugar, too bad, because Bloomberg says it's not good for you, and he tells you what to do. And if his stint as mayor is any indicator of his governance style, with him as president, homelessness rates, they'd skyrocket. And as if any of that wasn't bad enough, he actually has a serious authoritarian streak, which is probably why he got the nickname Mayor McFascist. After two terms as the New York City mayor, he decided, meh, what the hell, I'm just gonna change the rules so I can have another four years in office to tell everyone they can't have sugary drinks and how to live their lives. Then we've got 
uh, on our list, this fool, Julian Castro. And if he's not related to the actual Castros of Cuba, his policies are closely related enough since he was Obama's HUD secretary. He also, he has a, uh, an exploratory committee going, so the chances of him running are high. Some other names we've got on our list are Amy Klobuchar, who would be fantastic for the country, and Sherrod Brown, who would also be terrific. And the most popular option, according to NBC, is just somebody else. Somebody! Somebody! Anybody! Yeah, who cares who it is? Somebody, anybody. They just want somebody else to occupy the Oval that's not Trump. But they know that this clown car doesn't give them any viable options. So good luck to you, Democrats, finding the right one. You know, it would help if you had some good ideas and, I don't know, some people who weren't lunatics. But if this is all you got to offer the American people, I really hate to break it to you, but it looks like Trump will be your president for another four years.